كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا Lala, salam alaikum. How's right. it going, man? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How's work? Alhamdulillah. Work is good. Good. About family. You the programming. Family. Family is good. How's your dad doing, man? Say my salam. Say my salam to him, please. Inshallah. He's coming on Saturday. He is. Yeah. I look forward to seeing. Oh wait, I'm not going to be here on Saturday. Oh man, where are you going? I'm going to Houston. Inshallah. Oh. Has a program, I'm guessing. Yeah, lots of programs are up nowadays. Oh, so, alhamdulillah. What do you got going on? There are a few programs and you know, one of them, actually one sticks in my head because a program went great. At the end of it, this lady comes up to me and says, she needs to talk to me in private, mm -hmm. right? And um, I pull her to the side and she talks, starts talking to me about her husband. Mm -hmm. And it was, a, you know, it's, it's not the worst of what I've heard, but it's messed up enough. You know, so she, she comes up and says, you know, my husband's really religious. He prays five times a day. He goes to the masjid all the time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, um, he forbids me from seeing my family. Oh. He, he doesn't like when I call them, he doesn't like when I go over, so I almost secretly have to call my mom or you know, check on them and I don't, you know, am I, if I don't tell him that I'm talking to my mom, am I being sinful or something? Because you, know, you have to obey your husband, and so he keeps telling me you know, that the men are in charge of women and you have to do what I say, I'm the Amir of the household, so according to Allah and his deen, according to the Sunnah and the Sharia, ah, you have to obey me and you're under my household now so you can't do you know or you can't stay in communication with your parents or your siblings or whatever and uh, then on top of that he adds like uh, you know I don't want you to leave the house yeah. ever like just stay home and until I take you out don't go anywhere yeah. kind of thing so she's like am I sinful for you know he, she got in trouble for going in the backyard one time yeah. or something so like she's frustrated and he, her husband was there but he was in a bathroom break or something, so she figured she'd slip in the question. <laughs> SubhanAllah. I realized that, you know, a lot of times people do things in the name of Islam, and they quote Quran, Sunnah, Sharia, but, dude, it's like the exact opposite. You know, like, so, you know, the, the relationship between a husband and a wife is one of a partnership, yeah. and even though the husband has been given certain responsibilities in the home, the Qur'an's language is not men are authorities over women. Ar-rijalu qawamuna ala nisa Maintainers over women. The word qawam uh -huh. has nothing to do with authority. Which is really interesting, a lot of translations say men are authorities over women. Yeah. But the word qawam in all of its meanings, none of them have to do with authority. Actually, from it is one of the names of Allah. Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul Qayyum, from the same origin. And the word qayyum has nothing to do with authority, even when you're talking about Allah. It has to do with Him taking care of, maintaining, holding upright, etc. He maintains the entire existence. That's what makes him qayyum, you know? So just to take that and first of all say that I'm the authority over you, this doesn't make any sense. And then second of all, like, you know, I have a relationship with my wife. I, or my wife has a relationship with me. She has a relationship with her parents, with her siblings, with her friends, with you know, the other, all these relationships, right? Yeah. One relationship does not have the right to tell me to violate all the other relationships. So it doesn't supersede the others. It, right? They don't. Everybody has their space. You're not a slave. Like no human being is the slave of another slave or another human being. We're all slaves of Allah, yeah. right? So I owe certain things to my mom, for example, but she cannot tell me to do something against my wife or the other way around. And the same thing with my wife. I can tell her to do certain things, but if it's making her violate some basic, you know, rights of her own parents, like. She's not leaving the house and moving in with them or something, but she's giving them a call and checking on them. That's not something I can stop her from. And even if I do, it doesn't count. Because she owes them that responsibility. It came from Allah. Like it's not something that she decided she has to have. It's actually from Allah. You have to be the best to your parents. When Allah says, He doesn't say, Men, be the best to your parents. Women, until you get married. <laughs> just, the, the rest of the time, you, you know, consider them history. And you can just casually, like every Eid kind of, it doesn't say that. These are family situations. You know, so the other like weird thing in this whole scenario, first of all, they bring religion in where it doesn't belong. Then even about the freedom of this one, where can she go? Can she go outside and things like that? This is actually not a religious mandate. And he cannot tell her, you cannot go outside as a kind of from the religion. Yeah. But if he's insecure and he's overprotective and he's like going crazy that she shouldn't go outside, etc., etc. 
he this is his psychological issue mm. not the religions so i'm not saying mm. that she should be able to disobey her husband because she's obligated she's actually going even if she's not obligated it's a choice to go and she still has the right in other words you can't stop people from fulfilling obligations and you also can't stop people from their own rights i have the right to fresh air it is i mean the somebody could use this for an extreme right they could say okay well you know what i watched you know uh, a lecture and i heard about this or i heard this story about umar radiallahu anhu and then you know what i'm going to go on a road trip yeah. i'm driving to california husband see you later <laughs> like, <laughs> oh i mean people could do that but that's their problem then that's another psychological disorder like i'm just going to be rebellious cuz i can be etc i mean family is not about rules that are imposed like like if i have to quote a hadith at you every time i want you to do something or you have to quote an ayah at me then we've got much deeper issues than yeah. you know <laughs> then Quran and Sunnah we we don't have a normal marriage yeah. like marriage is about you know discussion and compromise making sure the other person's happy right and when you have to blackmail someone to do something using their religion that's like ultimate like evil yeah. I, i can't think of anything more messed up than that in a relationship to use chips like that to use hadith and Quran to impose your will on somebody else even though that doesn't even fit you know subhanallah so I tried to tell her what I could. Yeah, yeah, I, but you know, at the end of the day, she's she's in this situation and I can't or nobody else can intervene. At the end of the day, she's going to have to work those things out with her husband directly. Maybe it did help. Yeah, and maybe and maybe it did help, you know. And it, but at the very least this uh, I think in a lot of relationships there needs to be open conversation. Mm -hmm. And when people are misusing religion, they should be called out for it. Yeah. You know. So I just Makes me sad to see this, but inshallah, things are getting better. At least people have the courage now to at least come up to me. I, I commend your courage. It's not easy to come and talk about a problem you're having at home, you know. Yeah. So I pray that inshallah, so many people get helped I mean, because she's uh, had the courage to come and ask the question. Yeah. I'll see you next time, okay. inshallah. <laughs> تناجي الله في صبر وترجو رحمة تسري فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روب الخير ترى ما زلت تذكرها